Welcome to Pizza at Home Parenting. This is Picky Eating 101, Make Mealtimes Enjoyable Again. My name is Cora Megan. I've been working with infants, toddlers, preschoolers, and their family for over 10 years. I'm currently the director of an infant toddler center, parent educator here with, with uh, Pizza at Home Parenting, and a circle of security facilitator. And I'm happy to be with you this evening. As I mentioned, your thoughts are very important to everyone's learning, so please share. Tell us the real story, be brave. Be brief, raise your hand, or use the chat, uh, the chat function, and I'll be happy to answer or address any questions or concerns. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about why picky eating occurs. You may be seeing an uptick in these type of behaviors, especially with everything that's going on with the pandemic and working from home. Um, young children like to be in control, and when they feel out of control, they tend to dig their heels in and they want to control as much as possible. Some of that is what and when they eat. So we're going to talk about why this happens. We're going to learn the do's and the do nots of mealtimes. We'll talk about how to set mealtime limits in a positive way, and then you'll walk away with some action steps to take at home. So I want to hear from you. What inspired you to attend today's class? Is your refusing to eat certain foods? Are they misbehaving during meals? You have a hard time setting boundaries and setting limits. Are you hoping to encourage more healthy eating habits at home? Maybe you're unsure about how to set limits during meals, especially if your child is misbehaving, or a combination of all of the above. Please let me know why, what inspired you to attend today's class? And some parents are responding that your child is refusing to eat certain foods, which makes sense. That's what this class is about, um, picky eating. Some of you are seeing some mealtime misbehaviors. We will definitely talk about how to respond to that. And others of you have said a combination of all of the above. So you'll walk away with some tools and some steps to take when you go home. So I always like to start all of my classes by talking a little bit about your child's development because if we can understand what's happening with our children, we are more likely to be able to respond to their behaviors in a way that's supportive. And picky eating often surfaces around one year and that's because their growth is slowing down. They just went through a phase in the first 12 months of their life where they were growing so rapidly, their brains and their bodies. And at about 12 months, they're still growing, but it slows down. So they tend to eat less. They're also beginning to feed themselves. They have more control over what and how much they eat. They're learning lots of new skills. They have a much higher activity level because they're starting to be able to talk, walk, run, climb. They're just having a lot more control over their bodies, which leads to less interest in eating. They don't want to sit still. They also begin to seek sameness. How many of your toddlers want to read the same book over and over and over again? That is so common at this age. They like when things are the same. They learn through repetition. They like to repeat the same things over and over again. This goes for food as well. They also are developing more sensitivities to taste, smell, and textures, which you might start to notice. And that's going to uh, lead to them rejecting certain foods more than others if they are developing those sort of food sensitivities. So if we can understand this about our toddler, about our preschooler, we can be more empathetic to their needs and adjust our expectations. And that's going to be the key here. So it actually works during this stage of development and actually through the early years is to do your job and let your child do their job. We want to know our role and stay in our lane. Parents decide the what, when, and where of feeding. You decide what goes on the plate, what time meals are, and where your child must eat. But that's it. Your child's job is to decide how much they're going to eat and whether or not they're going to eat. And looking at mealtimes in this way requires a lot of trust because we have to trust that our children have their own relationship with their tummies and it doesn't really evolve us. It's their business. So by trusting that our children will eat when they're hungry and stop when they're full, 
they'll stay in tune to their hunger and their fullness cues. And they're gonna develop a healthier relationship with food later on. We often interfere with this. We pressure them to eat or we get really emotional if they're not eating because we have unrealistic expectations about how much they're supposed to be eating. They actually have their own genetic blueprint that decides this for them. So it takes the pressure off of us. We wanna do our job. Let's talk about the specific do's of mealtime. How can we make mealtimes more enjoyable and more positive so that your child is gonna be more motivated to eat and develop healthier eating habits? So the first step is to eat family meals together. Family meals provide lots of things for our children. They provide love, care, connection, and food. And I would actually argue that the first three are more important than the food part. So research has shown that families who eat meals together have more emotional connect connectedness. Children who share mealtimes with their families are less likely to engage in disordered eating later on and more likely to eat healthier foods, less likely to be overweight. And all of these effects last through adolescence. So we really set the foundation for success and a healthy relationship with food later on. So when we sit down for family mood meals, get rid of the distractions, turn off the TV, put the cell phone away, do not let your child play with toys. That's a trap that a lot of parents fall into, especially when their children are one. They think that they need um, to entertain them so that they can stay focused on eating. And that has an opposite effect. We want meals to have a 100% focus on food and on connecting with one another. We don't wanna trick our child into eating by giving them toys or things to distract, like screens. While you're sitting next to them, you can model appropriate ways of eating, model using your fork, talk about what's on your plate, try the new food, and uh, discuss the texture, the taste, where it goes. You can be really specific about that. Oh, this carrot in my bowl is really crunchy today. Did you notice how crunchy it was? Um, talking about the colors. I noticed that this carrot is orange, but the pepper is red. What colors can you find in your bowl? So making it really interactive, but all um, revolving around food and the act of eating, this is gonna help your child stay focused on eating and you're also gonna enjoy being together. We do want to offer food neutrally. This can be really tricky and you might not even realize that you're holding certain foods on a pedestal more than others. We need children to understand that food is fuel for their bodies. And we really want to avoid attaching any other emotions to it. So by eating the same foods with your child, if you have a rule, kids eat what adults eat, it communicates to your child that all people need the same type of food. Food is fuel. It helps us become healthy and strong. Um, we want to avoid food hierarchies. And what I mean by that is sometimes we withhold food items like fruit, like melon, until they eat everything else on their plate. And what we're doing is we're telling them uh, melon is more important than chicken, or it's, it's almost like a bribe. When you eat your chicken, then you can have your melon. And that kind of, your child really internalizes and pays attention to that. And they might be more inclined to enter into a power struggle with you simply because you're withholding the food that they want. So I encourage you to really have a you get what you get mindset Offer all the meal components on the same plate at the same time and let your child be in charge of what they eat. Um, if we don't offer alternatives or we don't withhold food until they eat something else, they're just going to accept the food as it is. They're going to be more likely to eat it. Children may need to be exposed to new foods more than 10 to 15 times before they try it. So simply having the food on the plate and letting them smell it and touch it and explore it a little bit is more than enough to um, start encouraging them to eat it in these early years. So just offer it neutrally, no emotions attached to it. The third do of mealtimes is to involve your child in the preparation process. Even young toddlers can play a really, really active role 
in mealtimes because they love to be helpers. They love to do things that grown-ups do. So they can help pass out utensils. They can clear their own plate. Um, these little ones in the photo are helping shuck the corn, and children love to do that. They love to see the golden corn appear underneath the, the greenery. Um, if, you're, if you don't want your child to really be involved in the food preparation process, like the chopping or anything like that, set up a little play space next to you with pots and pans and let them pretend to cook and you can talk them through the process. I'm, I'm chopping my um, broccoli. What are you pretending to do? So you can do um, things like that side by side. Uh, planting and harvesting is also a really great way to motivate them to try new foods. I tell you how many children I know who refuse to eat a tomato if it's on their plate, but if they pick them fresh from the garden, it's their favorite thing in the world. So just being involved in the process of planting vegetables and watching them grow, they're going to feel more invested, they're going to know where it came from, and they're going to be more motivated to try it. Now, young children typically need to eat every two to three hours. So try to have meals planned for those time intervals. Children love predictable and consistent schedules. They like knowing what happens in, in the order that it happens every day. And by keeping things consistent, um, you're gonna be able to alleviate power struggles that you might be having because they're gonna know that a boundary is set. They can't snack on demand. They know that their next meal is coming. That's okay if they feel hungry between meals. Uh, if you're feeling hungry, guess what? You're gonna be more likely to eat the healthy choice that I have planned for you for snack. Um, I know a lot of moms when their child is a young toddler and if they're still nursing, um, their child gets really interested in breastfeeding on demand. And I tell them as hard as it is to set boundaries, um, you want to start setting boundaries around on-demand snacking earlier. The earlier the better because as they get older, it's only going to get harder. So really try to pace these meals. Um, two to three hours apart. And if they are feeling hungry, just acknowledge the feeling. You're feeling so hungry, you want to eat right now. It's uncomfortable to be hungry. We'll be eating in 30 minutes. There'll be plenty of food for you to fill your belly. So we don't want to shame by saying, well, if you ate breakfast, you wouldn't be so hungry right now. Nope, just leave it as it is. You're feeling so hungry. It's okay to be hungry. I know it's uncomfortable. Maybe you can drink some water. They can drink water in between meals, but you want to set the boundary on the designated meal times. So I'm going to pause. Are there any questions or comments at this time? Does this make sense? Do you think that it will be effective if you start implementing some of these rules or these processes around mealtime? Remember, you can raise your hand. You can use the chat function. and. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions or concerns that you might be having. A lot of parents say that if they don't give their child a snack on demand, they have a temper tantrum. Um, especially if the meal isn't scheduled for another two to three hours and my child is really hangry. And my answer is the same. Uh, if you keep offering snacks in between meals, they're not going to be hungry for their meal. So any hard work that you put into the meal is going to be a waste. So just acknowledge the hunger. Acknowledge the feeling. You're really upset. You really want to eat right now. And I said no. And you can drink some water and we can read a book together. But I'm not going to I'm not going to give you a snack. We're going to eat in in an hour. So just being really kind, but being very firm. Let's move on to the do nots of meal times. We're gonna talk about what you should avoid doing during meals. And the first is forcing your child to eat. Remember your job. Children are in charge of whether they eat and how much they eat. We're in charge of the what, the where, and that's it. If we get in a process of forcing children or bribing children to eat, they begin to learn that they need to rely on us rather than themselves for hunger cues. So, oh, I have I especially with babies, we tend to we tend to sneak food in their mouth. 
uh, maybe when they're distracted because we take pride in babies eating. Um, but that teaches them to rely on us. So my my parent is putting the spoon in my mouth. I I guess this is what I feel like. Um, so we really want them, remember, to rely on their bodies, to stay in tune to their cues. Um, force feeding actually allowed to eat less and it makes picky eaters. So remember your jobs, force feeding is not effective. In this photo, you can see the baby is holding onto her spoon and her mom is holding onto her spoon and she's kind of guiding the spoon into her mouth. So she's really involved in the process. And I think that that's really great. We don't want to nag or make deals. Nagging your child to eat deals surrounding food is not a long-term solution for picky eating. We want our children to be motivated to eat healthy foods because they know it's fuel and it's good for their bodies. It will make them healthy and strong. Just because they get to eat desserts or because they get to do something more desirable that they've been wanting to do. We just want mealtimes to be enjoyable and full of gentle encouragement but not nagging or making deals. So we wanna avoid using food as a bribe or reward. Just two more bites, or if you eat your vegetables, you'll get dessert. Remember, we're, we're not um, create, we're all food neutrally. We're not having a food hierarchy. So dessert isn't necessarily better or more desirable than vegetables. Both have a time and place and both are important to eat. When we nag our children to eat, they can sense our agenda. Children this age are really in tune to their parents and in tune to their parents' emotions. And they tend to wanna to do the opposite of whatever we want them to do. We want them to get in the car. Nope, I don't wanna get in the car. They succeed at being different from us, being separate from us. So when we're really bribing or pushing them to eat, they can sense that and they just are naturally inclined to do the opposite. So again, they are in charge of whether and how much they eat. Um, we want them to pay more attention to their hunger and their fullness cues rather than our behavior. And when we nag or make deals, they can really sense that we're getting emotional about it and we're really invested in it. And that's when they tend to want to do the opposite. Do not offer alternatives. A good go-to phrase when your child is refusing food, you can say, you don't have to like it, but you're welcome to try it. Or I like to say, oh, well, you know, you didn't really like the broccoli last time, but you're older now, so I wonder if you'll like it today. But still leaving it in their lane and letting them decide whether or not they're going to eat it. Um, I also like offering a polite exit strategy if they do feel brave and they try the corn or they try the broccoli um, but they're feeling a little bit anxious about it you can offer them a napkin and say okay so if you try your broccoli and you don't like it you can spit it into your napkin like this and model how to do it really politely and sometimes they're more apt to try a food um, if they know that they can spit it out if they don't like it uh, especially if they do it in a polite way or if you can say, well, how about rather than take a bite, what if you just lick it? And offering them alternatives like that rather than eating a full bite. That's what I consider gentle encouragement. It's not um, bribing or nagging, especially if you're doing it in a really neutral way. If you're worried about how many calories your child is eating, which is often a concern of a lot of parents of picky eaters, be sure to serve a food that your child enjoys at every meal. Just be sure that you present it with the other food so that it remains neutral to them. And you can offer a little bit more. If they really like melon, you can offer a larger portion of melon, but it's still on the same plate as the broccoli. They can choose whether they wanna try the broccoli, whether they wanna eat the melon, um, but you're still keeping it really neutral. And that's a good way to make sure that they're getting enough calories at each meal, or at least a, a small amount of calories at each meal. So a child refusing to eat can be triggering. It can be really emotional. Um, interesting reactions from adults reinforce the behavior. 
So they like to repeat behaviors that feel good or that get an interesting reaction. And remember, interesting reactions aren't necessarily positive because angry or annoyed or concerned reactions are actually really interesting too. And they're gonna wanna repeat that behavior. So if we can stay matter of fact and positive, I understand you don't wanna eat, you must not be hungry. Still great to have you at the table so that we can talk about your day. Broccoli isn't your favorite. You don't have to eat broccoli if you don't want to. You still have chicken and bread on your plate if you're feeling hungry. So staying, again, neutral, matter of fact, positive, acknowledge the feeling, you don't wanna eat, you must not be hungry, but then reframe it as something they can do. You can try your chicken, you can try your broccoli, but you're not gonna negotiate, you're not gonna nag, you're not gonna um, bribe, and that ends up giving your child the power and the control to make their own choice. And that's how you're gonna get the outcome that you want. So first we want to create household rules around meals. These are gonna look different from household to household, but a few of the rules that I usually set around mealtimes are that children sit while they eat, Food and utensils stay at the table, and food is for eating, not for playing. And these are really simple rules that I know children of all ages, when they're set kindly and consistently, children understand, and they're capable of understanding and of following the rules. But it won't happen overnight. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of practice and consistency, and it's going to take time for your child to really learn, oh, my, my parent isn't messing around. If I throw my food, it means that I'm actually all done. So when we, um, once we establish the rules, either with your partner or even with your kids, if they're a little bit older, it's important that you really follow through on enforcing them. We do this in a firm, kind, and consistent way. So I notice you're playing with your food. I think you're done. And then you take the plate away. <laughs> Ow! I know it sounds hard, but you can do it. It looks like you're gonna throw your food. I don't want you to throw food. And then you stop their hand. Are you telling me that you're all done? It's important that you sit while you eat. If you stand up, that shows me you're all done and we will put the food away. So we really want to accept, expect compliance on the first request. We want to set the boundary that you're showing me that you're all done and then follow through on it by taking the food away or removing them from the table. Sometimes if you say, it looks like you're going to throw your food. I don't want you to throw the food. Are you telling me you're all done? If your child says no, you can say, okay, but if you throw your food, I'm going to take your plate away. And you set the limit in a really clear way. And then guess what, if they throw your food, oh, okay, you threw your food and now I'm gonna take your plate away and we can clean up. So they're gonna learn pretty quickly that you say what you mean and you mean what you say. If they're playing with their food, a logical consequence is that they're done and the food goes away. Um, it might take a few tries for them to understand when my food gets taken away, I'm hungry. So I don't wanna play with my food anymore because feeling hungry is uncomfortable. And they're not gonna starve, but sometimes, especially for two and three year olds, it's a really, really important and difficult lesson in cause and effect. So confidently enforce the logical consequence. If you stand up, chose me, you're all done, and we will put the food away. Okay, you chose to stand up, so I'm gonna take your food away now and, and put the food away, pack it up. Maybe we can try again tomorrow. So children really understand logical consequences when they're presented in this firm, kind, consistent way. So we'll wrap up by talking about the key takeaways. Picky eating surfaces around one year. We talked about some of the developmental changes that happen at this time. Their growth slows down. They like repetition. Um, they're more active. They don't wanna sit and focus on eating. So it's really common for it to appear in the second year of life. Remember your jobs. You decide what, when, and where children eat. Child decides whether they eat and how much they eat, and that's it. 
The do's of mealtimes, we want to eat family meals together, offer food really neutrally, involve your child in the process as much as possible, and remember to schedule your meals. No on-demand snacking. And then the don'ts, we want to avoid forcing our child to eat. We don't want to nag or make deals. They can really sense our agenda. We don't want to short order cook or offer alternatives. And we want to keep our reactions in check. Try not to react very emotionally. And then you want to sit either with your partner or reflect by yourself. What rules at the table are really, really important to me? And then you want to enforce limits around them. Hopefully that sets you up for some more successful meals since you're probably having a lot more meals together now that we are all socially distanced in our home. So what action step will you take first? <music>